Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We're still dealing with the book of Ephesians, but each verse has jewels and treasures in it. Listen to this. Verse 1 through 3. I know I'm reading these again, but we need to hear this. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Verse 3 is the one. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. Listen, when I was in the hospital, everybody kept saying, oh, the devil's attacking you. The devil's doing this. And See, I don't tend to give the devil that much credit. I don't even want to be bothered with him. But I tell you what, I know that God works all things together for the good, even if the devil's part of the of the plan. The devil is nothing but a flunky. All he's going to do is, is what the Lord says do, like when he said, have you considered my servant Job? And then the devil had to get permission from God to attack him in different ways. And what did God do? Yeah, yeah, you know how the story ends. So what I'm trying to tell you is, when I was in the hospital and everybody was thinking I was under attack, looking back at it now, I honestly believe this. I believe that God planned this, the whole scenario. Why, you say? I was in a condition I didn't realize how close to death I was. God had determined it was not my time. It was not that season for me to die. Listen, I was in the hospital four times. I had never been in a hospital in my whole life. I'm saying this for some of you who don't know what was really going on. But I want you to hear this in way more detail. I was in the hospital four times in two and a half to three months. I had five procedures done. Now, this is why I was in the hospital. The first two weeks, I stayed home. I could barely eat. I couldn't hardly catch my breath. I mean, you talk about short-winded and shortness of breath. It just continued to get worse and worse and worse. And I'm figuring maybe I have walking pneumonia. I've gone through that before. I can get through it by myself. I had never been in a hospital in my life. And I'm not one of those people that run to the doctor's office all the time either. God knowing that I had personally asked him, I asked God now to be my personal physician because I don't trust humans with my body like a lot of people do, even though there are times you just have to. Well, God decided to allow a crisis to ignite in my body. And I know right now, it was his way of channeling me to my healing. I had to learn and understand what was going on in me so I would know what to and what not to do, so I don't harm this temple any more than I have. I went to the hospital one night. I finally just couldn't take any more of not being able to catch my air. The paramedics took me to the hospital. Now this may take a minute, so I hope you have a little, a few minutes to listen. I went to the hospital and the first thing they did after all the tests and x-rays and all that was drain, well, first thing they did was send me to ICU. I was there 12 days. During that 12 days, they drained fluid from my heart. Almost two liters of fluid. I'm thinking all the weight I was carrying was fat, fat, fat. 
And the Lord showed me that a big portion of it was fluid. My, my whole system, my body was over inundated with excess fluid. I wasn't taking water pills. I, I Like I said, I'm not one to run to the doctor. I was trying to handle it myself. And I was drinking too much fluid to get rid of the fluid. Well, now I'm in the hospital. And I'm in ICU. And these nurses are taking, I mean, wonderful diamond level care of me. And let me tell you this. I had never been in a hospital before. I spent almost every day in the bed. I finally asked them to take the catheter out. I had never had a catheter in my life. But I knew that God said something to me two years prior. He said, I'm taking care of you now. It was shortly after my husband passed away. And I knew no matter what happened, I was in God's hands even if I had to trust medical staff of humans, I was in God's hands. So I asked God to choose my staff, choose the people who would work on me. And if any of them would harm me, make them get sick, make them stay off from work, make them get a flat tire, but don't let the wrong person work on me. You hear me? I'm trusting God more than I'm trusting these people. So as time went on, I get a little emotional knowing how good God is. As time went on, the next thing they did was stick a long needle in my back to draw fluid out from my lungs. That was something they failed at, but they did get a lot of fluid from me by giving me shots to make me urinate often, you know, diuretic shots. So... That helped lower the fluid levels to a point. I came home, fluid started coming back. I mean, it didn't take but a minute. And I was back in the hospital in a couple of weeks, short-winded again, couldn't hardly catch my breath, couldn't hardly move. I'm back in the hospital again. This time, they drained a cup and a half of fluid, that same long needle, well, you know, same procedure is what I mean. Yeah, I'm in there. They draw this fluid out. That it, I'm telling you that was the most painful thing to feel the needle penetrating the lining of my lung. That was hard. I'm serious. I hollered and I screamed. Okay, the next thing that happened was I go home. I'm doing great. Boom. Fluids back again. What the heck is going on? See, I'm not paying close attention. So I start praying, you know, God help me get what's really happening so I know how to handle me without having to run to the hospital every time. Anyway, I'm back in the hospital. This time, they go back in my back, but without the long needle. This time, they use a tube. I believe this is about how thick the tube was. It's actually about a half an inch. This might be a little thicker. And that tube, yeah, maybe it was more like this size. But that tube, they cut a hole in my back or, you know, split my skin. I don't know how they did it because I was out. I was out. They went in my back. They dropped this tube all, it was very soft, pliable tube, all in my chest cavity to soak up and draw the fluid out over a three to five day period, depending upon, I think it was in there five days while I was in the hospital. Listen to this, you guys. When I woke up from that procedure, because they had to put me under anesthesia, I had never been under anesthesia for a procedure. I had been under anesthesia in a dentist office for a root canal. But, you know, that was just a matter of waking up and just wanting to go back to sleep. But this one was far different. I opened my eyes. I looked around. And I said, I can't move. I can't move my head. I can't move my hands, my arms, my feet, my legs. 
Nothing was moving. Then I tried to speak and I couldn't speak. Well, what I didn't know till I started feeling around with my tongue was that there was a tube they had shoved down there. It did not hurt. I mean, God kept so much pain away from me. I know he did. It didn't hurt. I was very comfortable. And check this out. When I felt the tube, I realized I wasn't breathing on my own. It was a very comfortable breathing experience, but the machine was breathing for me. So laying there, I said, well, Lord, this must be a side effect of the anesthesia because I don't know what's going on, but the, I can't do anything about it. I can't get anybody's attention. You have got me now. I'm just going to go back to sleep. Now imagine how panicky you can feel when you wake up and you can't move. You're totally paralyzed. The mind can go into warp speed. Oh, is this going to be for life? You get all full of anxiety. But I didn't. God kept me in perfect peace because I kept my mind stayed on him. I kept trusting in him. I finally woke up a second time and I knew it had been hours and hours and hours. And they told me I had visitors. When the visitors came in, I was loaded. I was like, I couldn't keep my eyes straight. I was swimming. My eyeballs were swimming all around in my head. I was all woozy. But I knew exactly what was happening. My mind was very sharp. And I knew I was moving. I was talking. I was fine. And, and I said, yeah, that was the anesthesia. I found out afterwards that it wasn't the anesthesia that after they had put me under and they put the tube down my throat, impulse happened and I wasn't in a deep enough sleep and I reached and yanked it out. I could have done damage. Did God protect me? Yes. I didn't even have a sore throat when I woke up. Never did get one. Never did have any negative side effects or any pain of any kind. But listen to this. They told me they had to induce me into a coma in order for me to stay still enough for them to do the procedure. Now, this was not surgery. This was a procedure. Thank God I've never had to have surgery in my life. But listen, I could have hit the panic button. That could have been a long season of that. God, no, God had me and he had me in perfect peace. And I was totally comfortable. Now, believe it or not, after all that, I had to go back in the hospital again. This time, my heart was racing, went into AFib, 170 beats per minute. I couldn't catch my breath. My chest felt icky. It, it, there was no pain. Again, no pain. It was like no matter what happened, God was not going to let me die. Just wasn't, it, it, as far as he was concerned, it ain't happening. He had me. And they kept giving me so much medication. They see a black woman. They see a black heavy woman. They assume high blood pressure, diabetes, this, that, and the other. And they load me up with blood pressure medication. They couldn't assume diabetes because my sugar level was very much within normal, very in perfect normal state. But, you know, they assumed all that. So they're giving me everything. They're throwing everything down my, my mouth and shots and everything else, only to find out. I'm telling the nurse, I need you to take my blood pressure because I feel like I'm about to faint. It was a horrible feeling. It wasn't a pain, but it was a horrible feeling. And I really did feel like I was about to die. And the lady took my blood pressure. Two doctors come running in immediately and they say, stop the meds, stop the meds. Well, they were just trying stuff. Try this, try that, give her this, give her that. I didn't need all that because I didn't have that kind of a blood pressure issue. But what happened was my blood pressure had dropped 
to 78 over 42. That's low, you guys. I thank God for taking care of me. I feel wonderful now. Now if I see my ankles swelling up a little too much, I'm on top of it. I don't just let it go and because I don't want to go through that lung thing again. So God is teaching me how to regulate and normalize my whole system so I don't have to run in and out of the hospital. You know what the doctor told me when I went to see him two weeks ago? He said, uh, I know nobody ever told you this, but I, I think I'm safe to tell you now. He said, you know, when you first came, we weren't sure you were going to make it. But God, God had another plan. And for you, God has another plan. So when you think you got to run, you think you got to put out all these fires, you think you got to handle it. Trust me, baby. God has another plan. There's a reason why that's going on. I am now almost 40 pounds less than I was before I went into the hospital because of all the fluid they took out and all the fluid that I have to keep coming out with the Lasix, the diuretics. So this is a season for me, and I know it is, because when I get my weight down, all the water weight down, I'll know it. I know the way my ankles look when all the water's gone. And I still got about one quarter of the amount of fluid to go because I see it in my legs. But when all the fluid is gone, then I'll work on me. I'll, be, I'll have the stamina and everything else to work on me. And if I can lose another 30 to 40 pounds, 20 more pounds of fluid and 30 pounds of fat, even though I am a lot heavier than what I look, I will look a lot smaller and I will feel better. My heart will work easier. Everything will be better. I'm not trying to be twiggy. I just want to be healthy within my own personal limits. And God knows what that number is. And he'll tell me where I need to be. So I say all that to tell you when God has it, baby, as long as you cooperate with what he brings into your life. Cooperate. Don't buck it. Don't fight it. Don't struggle. Be at peace. Peace be still. And trust God that he knows what he's doing with you. And he knows how to take care of you. Don't fear. Believe. Do you hear what I'm saying? Don't panic. Be at peace. I pray that God keep you in perfect peace. And I pray that you keep your mind stayed on him, stay in his word, and stay in prayer. You know, I was asking the Lord to say, I got to share this little tidbit that I'm going to end this. I knew it was going to take a minute. <laughs> I asked the Lord, I think it was my third, my second or third visit. I said, Lord, if I need to get my paperwork in order and you're doing this to warn me that this is my season to die, then tell me and I'll start getting everything together, but give me time to get it together. And a particular scripture came to my mind. Can't think of it now, but. I called a friend of mine and asked her if she would read that scripture to me. This is right after I talked to the Lord about this. She read the scripture to me. I didn't know what it was going to say. Oh, yeah. And the scripture, I believe, was Psalms 18. I think that was it. But when she read down further, it said, and this answered me directly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The next verse said, For the Lord has not 
given me over unto death. When God has you, he has you. No devil in hell can take you out if God says not so. If God says live, the devil cannot make you die. Trust God. Trust God. He will heal. There may be some times when it seems like he's breaking you down. A time to break down and a time to build up. But whatever God breaks down, baby, trust me, in your life, he's only doing it to build you up. Let him build you up. Stay in his hands. Don't lean to your own understanding. Don't be a fool. Trust God. He cares for you. Cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. God bless you. I hope you really got a picture of how trustworthy God really is. And he'll be that way with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen.